welcome to the Fantasy News Show from The Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boyter and this is your weekly fix of fantasy fun. On this week's show, King Harold goes for a little walk, HP Lovecraft to stand still in a park, and the BBC to spread a little dust over his dark materials. But first, we've got some really sad news. It's been announced that the American actor Gene Wilder has died aged 83. The beloved uh, comedy actor starred in many films, quite a few that have turned out to be classics, spanning a career of 50 years or more, basically. He did a lot of films in the end. I think it was round about 25, plus he did a few TV shows and guest appearances. Some of his famous films were The Producers, Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles. He was also in the recent Alice in Wonderland. And my personal favourite is probably, obviously, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, where he did a stellar performance as Willy Wonka. So magical, so kind and warm, but a little mischievous as well. Um, yeah, I, I feel personally gutted about this one because he was such a brilliant comedy genius. And he was twice nominated for an Oscar, one for the sporting actor in The Producers and also one for the uh, writing credit on Young Frankenstein. He co-wrote that. He will be sorely missed. I think Jim Carrey summed it up brilliantly when he said, if there is a heaven, Gene Wilder will be given a golden ticket. So moving on, we have a rare Anglo-Saxon coin has been found near York in England. The coin is thought to be 1,400 years old. I mean, that's incredible. And he's only one of 19 ever found, according to experts at Yorkshire Museum. It was found near Full Ford near York by Ian Gregg. And get this, he had only a week before He'd only bought himself a metal detector, so pretty much a week in, and he finds this absolutely rare coin. Andy Woods, who's the creator of Money and Medals at Yorkshire Museum, said the coin was made somewhere between 620 and 650 AD, and he said it is incredibly rare. And on the coin, it's holding, on one side, it's a human holding two crosses, and on the other side, they believe it's a bishop that represents Paul. Oh, I don't know how you pronounce this. <laughs> there we go. True to form, Paulinus. Paulinus, who was the first bishop of York. The coin is believed to be worth between uh, five thousand and seven thousand pounds, which is not bad for a coin that is smaller than a five pence piece. Historians confirm the exact place where King Harold fell in the Battle of Hastings. According to the Vintage News website, archaeologists and historians put immense emphasis on the accuracy of the information that they've just discovered, um, that historians of the English heritage have now exactly located the precise place where he fell. They thought it was one place, but now they've discovered it's not. And get this, it's six metres away from where they originally thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's fantastic. Battle Abbey in Hastings was founded by William the Conqueror at the site of the battlefield and that is where they believe that the body of King Harold fell and again with histories there are some experts that disagree with that as well. <laughs> so I absolutely love this story where they, they're not 100% sure that King Harold actually died there. Even the Bay of Tapestry, there's some dispute of that. Did he was he the figure that actually had the arrow in his eye, or is he the one with the sword being killed on the on the ground? So again, I love that story. It's all about ifs and buts. But um, if you want to check out more information about that, you can. You can go to the English Heritage website, which is english-heritage.org.uk, to find out more. Or why don't you go there yourself and check it out? We will obviously be putting all the descriptions, sorry, all the links to these websites in the description of this episode. The Lovecraft Arts and Science Council is seeking funds to erect a statue of the American writer H.P. Lovecraft. They would, uh, they want to place the statue at the author's birthplace, which is in Providence, which is the capital city of the U.S., and it's the, the US state, I should say, Rhode Island, which I found out thanks to Google. The statue has been designed by local sculptor Gage Prentice and refers to Lovecraft's work of weird fantasy and cosmic horror. So the statue, they've got a little mock of it, a little picture, that in the left hand, Lovecraft is holding a telescope pointing up and behind him, symbolizing the, his inspiration from the infinite cosmos and the misty past. 
Um, a secure time capsule will also be housed in the statue's base, containing Lovecraft's complete collection of stories, his biography and letters from select donors of their Generosity.com campaign. So if you want to find out more, you can visit Generosity.com. Maybe you want to donate yourself. Search for Lovecraft Provident Statue Project and you should find the information. Basically, Wooden have launched a new wooden dice tower and new board game inserts. Very excited about this. Husband and wife team Andrew and Sue Garrett have come up with new designs for their ever-growing of board game uh, accessories. The newest addition is a dice tower which is all steampunk themed and it's a steampunk dice tower. It looks amazing, lots of fine etching on it. It's all very steampunk-esque. There's lots of detail, which I really love about that. And also the dice tower does fold down. It kind of comes in two parts. You can flip the lid down and then it's so it's easy for transport. Plus there's even a drawer that you can pull out to keep your dice in there. Plus there are new gaming inserts, which are both from Fantasy Flight Games. They are Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror. If you play those games, you will know there's a mass of components that can get a bit unwieldy. Well, they have designed these inserts, so all your components will be precisely fitted into the box beautifully, and obviously they're little containers you can lift out, so uh, packing up time should be quicker. Now, I have bought one of these dice towers previously, and I absolutely love it. It's really well made, and it just adds a little bit of sparkle on the gaming table. So we also did a, an interview with Andrew when we were at the UK Games uh, Expo, so you can check that out as well. So if you'd like to find out more, you can go to basicallywooden.co.uk. Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials is to get a TV adaptation by the BBC. Whilst I know this isn't the latest of news, because I think this was announced back in April, I missed it. So I, I was very delighted to discover it when I was Googling the other day. Yes, the BBC have announced that they're going to be adapting his work for TV. There was obviously the Daniel Craig film that got mixed reviews. Jack Thorne is uh, to write this TV adaptation and he was recently nominated for three BAFTA TV awards and he also wrote the new uh, Harry Potter play. So we know that this project is going to be in good hands. His Dark Materials is partly set in a parallel universe and tells the story of Lyra, who is a girl that embarks on a quest to understand the mystical properties of what is known as dust. And it's a very intriguing story. Massively excited by this news because I have read the books I absolutely love them. So yes, so I, when I get more news, you shall too. Hopefully a little bit quicker than I have done this time. Waterstones Sci-Fi and Fantasy Book Club is hosted at their Piccadilly London branch next month. And when I say next month, I actually mean tomorrow. It's on the 1st of September at 7.30. And this event is hosted by Miranda Debenham and will be at the Lower Ground Floor Cafe. I believe that this is a new venue for them. Now, I've only just stumbled across their Facebook group, so I don't know too much about the group, but this month's book is uprooted by Naomi Novik. But it does say that if you haven't read the book, don't worry about that. Come along anyway and say hello. I guess that's how you start with book clubs. You kind of just join in when you can, even if you haven't read the book. So as well as discussing the book, they will be discussing then what they want to read for the next uh, book club, which is in another month's time. So obviously if you do go along, you can obviously get a chance to vote on what you'll be reading next time. So sorry for that it's very close to this one, but I thought I'd make you aware, so at least you can go along if you want to. You can find out more by visiting uh, waterstones.com or search on their Facebook, search for the Facebook group on Facebook, obviously. LARP Fashion have launched a new armour making blog. I was quite intrigued by this one. LARP Fashion makes and sells various medieval and gothic clothing and accessories and jewellery, all designed for live action role playing or LARPing. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's basically D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, but in real life. Yes, people dress up and they have foam swords and foam axes and that kind of thing, and they act out a quest. And there's a sort of referee or a dungeon master that will tell you the rules and keep an eye on things. And I have done it once, years ago, when I was about 15, and it was a lot of fun. Well, this website caters for that. It, it, it creates costumes and armour. And they have decided, obviously, through demand, that uh, people have obviously want to make their own. So this guy called Alex, I don't know his surname, just, he's just signed it, Alex, has decided to do a blog. And hopefully they're going to be having videos as well, so you can have video tutorials. 
to show you how you can make your own costumes. If you want to find out more, visit larp-fashion.co.uk. Did that make sense? Probably not. Okay, moving on to Kickstarter news. We have Glothora, hang on, let's start that again. Glothana, I think that's how you pronounce it, The God's War. And that is a game based on the mythical cult universe Glothana and designed by Sandy Peterson. I like the fact that I pronounce it differently every time I say it. Now this game is a fast moving strategy game set in that universe for three to five players. And the gods are at war with each other. And each player takes uh, the role of one of the gods uh, where you have to gather your forces and then send them out onto heroic quests and do battle for you so that you can shape the world in your image. Obviously, that's what gods want. The theme is based on this universe, which was written 40 years ago. This theme, this, this universe was created by Greg Stafford. And there's been multiple role-playing games over the years about this. There's um, lots of components in this game. There's highly detailed miniatures, there's tokens, there's cards, there's a board. It does look beautifully designed and they do have lots of information about how to play the game and all about the universe and the mythology behind the game. It's already funded and it finished on the 15th of September. Goblin Market is an art book illustrating the 19th century narrative poem written by Christiana Rossetti. And artist Omar Rayan has, is very passionate about this poem. He's absolutely loved this for years. And the poem was first published in 1862, which is quite a long time ago. And he says it's teeming with Im imagery and symbolism, and it's true to the nature of the pre-Raphaelite era. And the poem is about two sisters, one named Laura, one named Lizzie, who are enticed by the calls of the goblin merchants when they visit uh, a market. And there, there they sell fruits in abundance and a variety of flavours and colours. And Laura, she can't resist. She gives in to temptation and Lizzie tries to help her fallen sister because all is not what it seems. Uh, Omar Ryan has illustrated for many publishers, uh, including Simon & Sulcher, Random House and Disney, plus he's worked in, in, for ages in the board game industry, most notably for Magic the Gathering. So if you like that card game, you've probably seen some of his artwork already. And he was also the con one of the concept artists for the film The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. The illustrations do look beautiful in that classic kind of almost chocolate boxy fairy tale style. And uh, I actually cottoned on that, that my own book, The Legends of Grim and Iron Blood, is very similar. This is a poem, mine's a poem, and mine is illustrated, and he wants to illustrate this as well. There are various pledge levels, such as a printed book, then you can have a signed printed book, plus you can have a print with that as well. Plus there's another uh, pledge level where you can have two books, one of which is Omar's previous book of, of his selected works. If you're interested, you can check that out on Kickstarter. It's already funded and it finishes on the 23rd of September. Now, I do have another Kickstarter uh, project to announce, but I don't know where it's gone. Here it is. I've got it. Hurrah! In my notes, got a bit confused with them. Here we go. Fairy Enchantment is set is a set of mythical cards illustrated by UK-based artist Ian Daniels. He is drawing on the ancient Celtic and magic symbolism, and each card is each set is made up of 27 five by three and a half inch cards. Plus, there's a booklet explaining the process of creating and casting your unique enchantment. Um, these are magic spells, basically, and they're represented with a unique fine art painting on the back, and then on the reverse is actually all the components you need for the spell and he draws on goddesses and fairy queens from Celtic mythology. Um, there are also fine prints that you can buy, you can put into the pledges as well. Now I backed in Daniel's last project which was gothic playing cards where we, uh, which I thought were amazing, I really love his artwork and um, he fulfilled his pledge, there was no problems, I didn't get them late or anything like that so you can trust Ian on this one. So I'm really excited about this. There's loads of images uh, that you can check out to see if you actually like his artwork. And there we are, that's the siren wrapping up the show. It's already funded and it finishes on the 5th of October. That is all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, we do have a Friday fantasy show, which obviously comes out on a Friday, where we cover all things fantasy, fantasy board games, books, films, etc., etc. Remember to subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe, share the word of the bottled dib, and remember, keep it unreal, especially if it's the news. Mm -hmm.